can get going. Uh, so here's a quick introduction about myself. So my name is Nitin. I, uh, I'm primarily a product guy working in startups for about 10 years, uh, uh, you know, overall 14, 15 years into software development. Uh, I'm more into product management. So uh, in my current role, I lead a you know, team of product owners at uh, a real estate startup called commonflow.com. Uh, also a runner uh, into lean and agile for a bunch of years. This is here's what I, you know, I'm going to cover uh, in, in quick way. A very, very quick introduction about idea to scale. I mean, you know, how do you just take the whole idea from idea stage to a uh, you know, scale startup? What is the overall process? Uh, what defines a good metric? So, you know, if you once you get into the data, how do you, you know, take a call on you know, metrics? What are the different types of metrics that people are tracking? Give you some samples, some uh, uh, anecdotes. Uh, we'll talk about a bunch of lean analytic frameworks uh, that people follow. You could pick any one of them, you know, them and you know, everyone pretty much talks about the same thing. And then how do you sort of structure that to uh, start tracking your own startup growth and you know, various uh, metrics. Uh, one key thing uh, out of the whole session is uh, the whole concept of one metric that matters, which is a really, really hard thing. Uh, you know, essentially a lot of uh, people tried, you know, I mean, including me, we have tried uh, at a bunch of places, but it's really hard to do. We'll just talk about that. And uh, how do we look at the overall uh, tracking approach? Uh, you know, and then a quick uh, Q&A. So obviously, all starts with an idea. Now, it could be a business idea. It could just be a feature request. It could be a new service. Uh, you could pretty much apply analytics into you know into any of these uh, you know aspects. Uh, obviously, you have tons of ideas. You know, time a dozen. You, know, you talk about a brainstorming. You'll get hundreds of ideas. The real hard thing is how do you prioritize them? How do you take it them? You know, from a idea to a you know actual you know a validated product uh, to a scalable business, right? Uh, so uh, the, the very primary thing into lean startup is the whole Steve Blank's customer development model, which I'm not going to go totally too much into it, but it starts with a discovery, a product discovery. So you start once you have an idea, you try and validate that idea, you know, in your market. So you do a, go through a whole uh, product discovery. Uh, try and validate with your actual customer, get out of the building, validate your idea with you know a set of customers. Once you have reached a product market fit, which is really, really crucial, you know, sort of uh, milestone in a startup journey, uh, that's where you start looking for efficiency and scale. So if you really have to, uh, you know, sort of draw a life cycle for a startup, it is clearly before product market fit and after product market fit, right? And just to achieve, eight, you know, just to tell you the stats, 80% of the startups are still into product market fit, you know, haven't reached that level. Uh, so scale and all that is like a totally different ballgame. So, uh, and that's where metric, you know, sort of uh, plays in. So like a quick, uh, so there's a really good website called uh, Funders and Founders. You know, if you're really into startups, you'll, you know, you'll really find very useful uh, stuff. It sort of draws the whole picture of how do you go from, you know, uh, typically you hit upon an idea, what is really missing somewhere, you know, what is the problem that you, you know, hit upon. Uh, you try and make a quick prototype, you call it MVP, you call it prototype, you know, there are a bunch of ways to uh, take a look at it, show that prototype to 100 people, uh, iterate, keep iterating on the whole prototype. Uh, a lot of people also, you know, start finding if you're a functional or business guy, you start uh, pairing up with a technical co-founder. So, you know, so that you really start uh, working together and collaborating. Uh, you, then you start looking for your initial seed funding and stuff, uh, launch it, uh, get some thousand users. Uh, one of the key metrics that people follow is that if you're how to know that you're really doing well. Each startup, you pick up a key metric and you really have to be growing at 5% per week on, on that metric. And you really have hit a scale, you know, and got a million user base and stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, keep you know, iterating on that. So it just sort of summarizes how you go. We're not going too deep into it. It's, uh, it's more of uh, the Lean Startup 101 uh, than the analytics. We'll go a little into uh, the analytics part. All right, so typically this is, you know, this is what you'll see very often. This is the loop that you go through if you're working for an artup, you know, uh, for a startup. You have an idea, uh, you start building onto it, uh, you know, and during building it could be prototype, coding, you know, a whole bunch of things. Uh, as you build, you continuously, you know, sort of iterate through and uh, measure what you're building. Is it working, you know, not working? Uh, you learn from it, you collect a lot of data and then you learn from it and then you put it again back to the overall loop. Uh, the, the successful startup iterate through this loop, you know, dozens of times. Uh, during a week, you know, for on every feature request, uh, and that's where you sort of start gaining attraction. Uh, the the issue with this is, you know, obviously, uh, when you talk about ideas, there are tons of ideas to do. You know, even within, uh, you know, uh, the moment you start on an idea, you start getting dozens of ideas of how to scale that idea. 
So it's really become really hard to prioritize you know, what you're doing. Uh, obviously, building comes really easy, so therefore we see a lot of products being built uh, which go to customers only after it is built. You know, obviously, and then you know, it bounces back and you don't know, you know why it is not, people are not you know, signing up. And we hear, you know, hear a bunch of stories uh, around that. Uh, the real uh, issue becomes in the you know, sort of last, you know, the second stage, which is measure. So if you're not tracking the real metrics, uh, which is meant you know, to be tracked for you, uh, obviously the whole loop, the whole learning will be very, very skewed. So you will probably think that you know, I'm just growing my startup, you know, things are looking good, but obviously you're tracking the wrong metric. Therefore, you know, obviously you can't make out that you're, you're making a lot of you know, errors right there. So we're gonna focus right there on this stage uh, and skip through the you know, rest of it. All right, so, so this is a quick definition of what the you know, analytics is. Typically, once you've figured out a business goal, which is, you know, this is what I'm gonna do in the startup, uh, analytics is nothing but it'll try and measure you how closer you are to that goal uh, and uh, you know, help you in uh, that part. Uh, for a lot of funded startups, typically, this is the whole definition is that you're gonna iterate through the whole product market. You have to achieve a product market fit before you run out of money. Uh, if you have run out of money and you have still not got product fit, you know, uh, I, I think if you attended uh, some of the sessions, Tiny Owl and a whole bunch of things, we have still not got a good product market fit and obviously, you know, the money is gone. So uh, you have to really iterate through the whole loop faster so that you get product market fit and then you can start scaling and, you know, looking at the different challenges. In a bigger company, uh, the analytics typically helps you to, you know, present the data that you need to, you know, data or buy-in, you know, to get a, get a buy-in. You know, I'm going to do this. Uh, you know, because this is a data, you know, otherwise you, all you have is just opinions, you know, right there. All right, so quick, uh, you know, sort of basics on what makes a good metrics. Typically, uh, you have to have a metric which is comparative, uh, you know, so if you're looking at, uh, you know, X number of users acquired, uh, it's, all, it's no good, you have to look at it, you know, whether it acquired, you know, is it better than the last week or this week? So you need to start comparing the metrics all the time, you know, if you've got uh, growing at, you know, at what percentage uh, and from what baseline. So typically a comparative metric is really, really good rather than an absolute number, uh, you know, that you track. Uh, it has to be really simple, uh, you know, because a lot of startups get into a very complicated, uh, you know, sort of uh, definitions. Uh, and then you spend a lot of time and most of the time to explain what the metric is rather than actually tracking and, you know, discussing that thing. So it, you have to be really, really simple, you know, keep a KISS principle right there. Uh, and we'll go through some of the metrics that uh, you know we, we used to track. Sure. So the the, the only issue with it is that uh, as you start start uh, you know iterating through it, uh, and you know you're computing a bunch of things, and, and you have a team, uh, you'll spend more time into telling them what that metric is, what we're learning from it, uh, rather than you know actually focusing on the metric itself. Right. Right. Absolutely. This is what we do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, I, and I'll tell you some of the examples from what we have done and how it sort of changes the whole team behavior in picking up, you know, what Kalpesh said uh, in his talk. Uh, some of them, you know, uh, you, you'll find uh, right there. Uh, the other thing is ratios. You know, so uh, you, you hear about a lot of, uh, you know, we have 100,000 users. But that doesn't do any good, you know, if you don't start, you know, whether you're doing good or not, because cumulatively you're obviously, you know, making it from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000, but did it, uh, you know, is it 10% more than the last week or not? You don't know. So unless you get into ratios, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to do any help. Uh, one of the key principles that, you know, typically people say that uh, a good metric is what, you know, if it is going down uh, or going up, uh, it really has to change the behavior. You know, people have to jump out of their chair and say, you know what, you know, something is wrong. Uh, otherwise, like, you know, you will go through the whole, uh, you know, weekly metric reviews and stuff every week and yeah, yeah, nothing is changing. So you really have to pick out one of those which sort of changes the whole behavior, you know, for, uh, uh, for your company. It's a, it's a quick dashboard I picked up from uh, one of these companies. Uh, you, it's a little bad, but it basically talks about what is the, you know, average revenue per user last month, you know, versus this, uh, you know, what is the average subscription. So a lot of them are uh, sort of ratios. Uh, some of them are numbers, but they are also comparing, you know, positive, negative trend from, uh, you know, previous weeks. And we'll go through some of the examples right there. You know, so that was about, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort of what makes a good metric. Now, what are the different types? So obviously, you have qualitative, you know, quantitative metrics, which talks about numbers. 
uh, but you also have a lot of qualitative metrics, you know, which uh, talks about you know your actual customer discovery, which is happening. So we are doing a lot of customer interviews. You're getting input from them that you know usability is not good, or I'm finding this to be a little difficult. Uh, so you really need need to make a balance between you know sort of quantitative what you're tracking uh, and qualitative metric, you know, and sort of start talking to customers. So you don't need to just rely on some numbers. Uh, a lot of these numbers will tell you uh, what is happening, uh, but they will not tell you why is it happening. You know, to get the why, for example, you get Google Analytics and you know, a lot of metrics are there. But unless you actually talk to the customer, that cannot replace, uh, you know, sort of digging up. So one of the things that we have done in our company is that we used to analyze a lot of metrics. For example, you know, if you are going through uh, app installs, you know, so you need to track why app installs are going well and really what did we do in the last week that you know sort of app installs have shot up. Uh, now you can try and figure out with the team uh, why it went up. Uh, but at the same time, you also have to figure out what customers are really liking about it, you know. And suddenly, you know, if there's one feature that you shipped that people have started liking, therefore you can, you know, sort of ride onto it and do more of it. Similarly, if it is going down, you need to figure out what is not working so that you can, you know, sort of uh, talk about. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Changing the behavior. I mean, as you said, absolutely, absolutely. Right. So, so and. That is about quantitative quality, and the similar is vanity and actionable. So you know, uh, you know, the other good definition is obviously the a lot of uh, companies. So vanity metrics typically is more for PR. You know what? We have reached hundred thousand downloads. I mean, it's good to get into the PR, but you know, the actionable are something that that is internally you know, dude, I need to improve on this, otherwise I'm screwed, right? So that is actionable metric for you because otherwise hundred thousand downloads is doing nothing, you know, nothing uh, you know, really there. All right. Uh, Quick examples of you know people still track page views. You know obviously it's a good so 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 one of the principles is it's not that you shouldn't measure anything. You can measure thousands of metrics, but what should really matter is you know a very few which is you know gets you into some action. Uh, otherwise it's purely a vanity metric. You, know, you have unique page views. You know you put more money you'll get more uh, you know page views. Uh, but is it really going to change your behavior? May not right. So therefore it's all vanity. Uh, Again, you know, one of the other things that typically happens is, you know, obviously what you're doing, you know, you're reporting a bunch of metrics, but at times you also end up into an exploratory metric and figure out, all right, you know, we are looking at this pattern and let's dig into the data and figure out if there is something really happening there. Uh, that actually helps you, uh, you know, into correlated and you know causal metrics. So, so correlated is typically, uh, and I'll give you a good example of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Airbnb, right? So, so correlated is typically if you have two metrics that are working in tandem. Uh, for example, a good photograph led to more bookings at Airbnb, right? Uh, you know, now so initially when they started, they were just looking at that there is some correlation. You know, every time we have more you know pictures coming in uh, from a specific city, there are like bookings are going up. So you get into a correlation, and once you are, you start finding is there anything that is causing there? You know, so the the best sort of discovery uh, thing for about a startup, if you have figure you know if you're able to figure out a causal uh, sort of uh, you know thing between two. Uh, that's where you're able to push that thing and do more of that. If not, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I, I did something, and some of it might have changed, you know, you know, made the impact. So we made a release, uh, and it suddenly, uh, you know, sort of jumped up our installs. So you know, there is a correlation between what you did and you know, uh, sort of, and what happened. But you're really not sure. You know, you could be having a correlation with a bunch of metrics. But if you, the more you dig into a, you know, sort of correlated metrics, and you see, you know what? This might have caused this, right? This specific thing. Then you can do a little more of that. So you know, as a you know, when you once you're going through the data, you really have to figure out uh, between correlated and causal metrics and keep sort of doing more of uh, them. Uh, so one of the uh, examples, I think, uh, sorry, I already gave the Airbnb example. So we also did at Comfort, we we did one of the things. I, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, we launched something called a 360 degree virtual tour. So you know, we work work in a real estate domain. So we came up with a cool idea that you know what we're going to change the way people are hunting property, and we'll give them a 360 degree views of the whole property. We did a bunch of pilot, you know, with some you know five or ten properties, and then we started to you know analyze the data, uh, and we you know obviously put a hypothesis right there. You know what I mean? We're going to do this, but is it going to change? What is it going to change? So we sort of put a hypothesis much uh, before, and I'll talk about that whole framework. Uh, and then we realized that the average time people are spending on that is much more. Now. That is, you know, just a sort of correlation, but we don't know, you know, whether that is the causing it or, you know, there's like actually generally more prop people are coming and, you know, buying that. And then we observed it over a period of time and, uh, you know, found that there, there is, you know, some sort of correlation. 
but exactly not the cause. So cause, you know, typically came when we actually spoke to the guys and figured out, you know what, they really, you know, like this, and uh, therefore I think if you do more of it, you know, it's going to move some of these metrics more. All right. I think I missed one uh, somewhere. Yeah, the other uh, one to look at is a lagging indicator and leading indicator, right? Now, uh, lagging indicator is, you know, whatever is done and dusted with, you know, for example, uh, you know, your uh, sales uh, sort of uh, ch you know, churn rate. Now, once once the customers are gone and you're tracking your churn rate, I mean, there's really nothing you can do about whatever is gone. You can always take a measure, you know, in future. Uh, but leading indicators typically will show you uh, you know, this is what it is. Based on this, you are able to predict the next set of things. For example, sales funnel. So if you really keep a track on your sales funnel, it's going to tell you how much are actually going to convert. Now, if this is going way too thin, therefore, you know, obviously the, your sales will go down. So you, you have to keep a balance between, you know, what are your leading indicators and know about them and lagging indicators. If you don't know, then your interpretation will be always wrong, uh, you know, in that sense. All right, so uh, we quickly run through some framework and one of uh, one specific that I'm going to go deeper into. Uh, there are multiple, you know, sort of uh, frameworks. So, so now what metrics do you track is based on the stage that you are in, you know, the, you know uh, and there are multiple frameworks to figure out which stage you are in and what business you are in. These two factors determine what metrics you track, right, and we're going to talk about it. So this is uh, Eric Ries uh, Lean Startup book, if you've read. It's a, you know, three engines of growth, as he said. One is a stickiness engine, the other is virality engine, and, you know, obviously the, the, the price. Now, stickiness engine, your whole key thing is to sort of, uh, you know, one metric that you have to figure out is churn, uh, you know. So you're, you have to acquire customers at a higher pace than you're able to lose out them. That would mean that, you know what, some customers are still sticky, and if you keep doing more, you know, you're going to stay uh, longer in the business. Now, once you have a sticky base, you have to figure out how do I make it to the next level. So how do I make, you know, make it go viral and do more of, you know, some of the growth hacks so that, you know, more and more users start coming in. And then you have to go on the you know price, which is then you start making you know, some revenue. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, and this is again the lean analytics stage. So, see, more or less, I'm going to draw a comparison here. More or less, it's simple, uh, you know, that you first figure out your initial set of customers, make them really, really sticky. Uh, and Amy Joe also, you know, uh, Amy also talked about that uh, in the game thinking. Once it is really sticky, and you you know you figure out that people are really using it, then you figure out how can we make it viral, do more of it, how do they refer other, you know, friends and family and stuff to, to use it. And once you're there, then you start, you know, figuring out how to monetize that part and then scale and do it on a more consistent basis, right? Uh, so this one particular framework, uh, you know, so this is again, uh, this is one more framework which people use. So in Lean Canvas, you figure out, uh, I'm not going too deeper, but you figure out what are your problems, what are your solution, and you figure out your key metrics that you always look at it and always change your behavior based on, you know, uh, some of this. This one is what I have applied, and I'm going to go deeper into it. It's really, really simple. I mean, I think if there's one takeaway you can take from the session is uh, Dave McClure's uh, pilot metrics. Really helpful to understand any business. You know, and, and I'll tell you how you, know, you can try that. So it basically buckets into five uh, blocks. And uh, uh, in our uh, product, we've actually done our roadmap based on these blocks. And you know, therefore, KPIs would also do that. So the first thing is you have a product. Now you have to figure out how do I acquire users? So that's your acquisition you know, track. So now that could you know, retain from how do you acquire to how many are you acquiring. So you can figure out a bunch of KPIs around that. right? How are I acquiring it? What channels are working for us? A whole bunch of things will come under acquisition. So you know, there the KPIs could be unique page views. You know, you're tracking it. Uh, you know, number of users you are getting it on a week-on-week -week basis. Daily, you know, uh, number of uh, downloads you are getting it if you're in an app business. All this is your acquisition. So you really have to figure out, you know, how are we acquiring? Now, in a very, very early stage, you may not even bother too much because you are really working with a very small set of users, right? And you are sort of in a concierge mode or wherever you are working with them. So therefore, you know, I mean, I, I have a bunch of 100 users that I'm going to go back to. So this may not matter, but uh, this will become really useful once you start scaling it. The second part is activation. Now, that is what is that, is your conversion. So now, once you, they come to your website or you, they come to your product, uh, did they convert or not? You know, did they do a particular thing uh, that you wanted? Did they sign up, for example? You know, if you're doing a, you know, so that sign up is telling you that, you know what, now you have activated the user. First time he has used it. Now, this is also similar to onboarding, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in game thinking, but it may not be. You know, it's more of conversion in, uh, in at least our uh, parlance. Now, 
and that activation also talks about the first time experience of a user right now once you have acquired them are they coming back that's your retention uh, most of the startup would struggle right here this is where your product market fit also is that you have got you've spent a millions you know in getting app downloads but if people are not sticking to it not using it on a frequency that you know you would uh, want to it's complete waste so retention is the most key aspect uh, you know right there and and 70% of the product development also would happen for retention you you if you have customers you know you're building bunch of features you're building because you want to retain them right i mean obviously revenue is one part but also you want to retain them i mean there are like half of the time people will say if you don't build i'm going right so you're struggling you know on the on the retention side uh then you have your revenue you know where is your money coming from and the whole ripple now if you just uh, you know i'm going to go through example but this is really really powerful uh, way to sort of categorize what you're doing in your entire startup uh, and you know at pound floor we've done uh, implemented this we also implemented our whole roadmap so now you pick a metric and you figure out what do i need to do to improve this and you have your backlog right and then you can rank order prioritize now in every sprint you can figure out which of this are we trying to improve right are we trying to improve retention are we trying to you know and we put this whole structure where uh, our development team were talking to product managers you first you tell me which of you you know are you picking this are you picking a retention oh okay this is what we need to improve this becomes your sprint theme in so to say that we are working on retention uh, in retention what kpi are you trying to improve that's the next part i'm going to come to you and and that's where you sort of the whole language changes now product managers also are forced to think uh, okay what exactly am i trying to solve you know and they have obviously hundreds of features but this framework will give you that whole structure to really think what do i need to do and you will also look at you know your metrics if you have set up metric will help you figure out okay my retention is going poor now i need to do what do i need to do to improve it right and then people can brainstorm figure out what they need to do come up with the hypothesis and you know validate it through uh, yeah so it's it's called r if you re read it's a a r you know r is the word you know r you know yeah uh so the other thing this also does is it it makes a very very good funnel right so if you have you know sort of and you know this is a sample example you know i picked up from somewhere if you have 1000 if you have 100 customers visiting your website uh, right and you only 30% signed up you know so you suddenly have out of 100 30% you know sort of activated out of them actually next week only 3% came so your retention rate is 3 out of them only one sort of you know converted into a paid customer or made you you know give you some you know money so those are like 2% and then the amount you know they give you money and then how many referred you is only 1% so if you on a every week basis you will be able to draw this funnel and see how are you doing you know you might be acquiring you know so this you can apply it on a very scale at a growth level also and at a very very early stage also it sort of sort of fits across all of this uh i'll just uh, show you what we then so now this is a framework right i mean you you can't just completely copy it what you really can do uh, is take away uh, you know the the gist and what we did i mean it's a it's a personal uh, thing that we're sharing so we figured out that for us acquisition uh, from a marketing perspective uh, and a sign up perspective is different so you know i made a sort of extension to this and added a one more a at the uh, you know first which is attention so how many actually are we drawing it to our website so we sort of started to bucket that totally different because that was a you know metric for marketing and not product per se right i mean product was doing you know more from once you signed up what's your experience is what we were trying to you know uh, break up so we gave marketing marketing a bunch of metric and say you know what uh, and we really list, listed on all the questions that we want to be answered right one of the things about metrics is that before even you go to you know x and y uh, ratios you really have to just think what question do we want you know answered uh during the whole startup journey so we wanted to figure out that okay we have a product now let's look at it, how many people are showing interest in us anything that we do and you know how do we measure it by looking at unique visitors on our website so, i mean you know is there any other way no i mean you know that's the only thing you know if you do anything it has to come somewhere as a unique you know as a unique visitor and we will be able to track whether that is improving or not on a week on week basis or not uh now we want the second thing we want to figure out is okay if people are finding us where are they finding us how are they finding us what channel so you know we listed out you know that there are like the real estate website or it's just simply organic or it's like directed some of these ignore which were which was our internal lingo uh now once they you know sort of coming to our website are they is the content good enough what so how do we measure that our content is really good enough because when you are 
uh, you know, one of the thing that you validate your uh, sort of uh, value proposition is uh, users came to your website. Are they understanding that you know what this is what I was looking for and is there? How do you know that, right? So we wanted to ask a question based on our based on that we can copy our you know sort of tweak our copy on the website, right? So we figured out what will be a good KPI to indicate that. So that's typically your average session time on the website. If it's very low, obviously people are not going to make out what the hell they came for and they are exiting. So your exit rates will you know sort of increase. So there is some correlation between average time spent on the website and you know exit rate. Uh, Similarly, then we started, okay, once we have all of this, let's figure out how many, you know, people are signing up, how many users are we acquiring, I mean, some of those are internal, uh, you know, metrics, uh, I've removed the data and do, uh, how many, you know, mobile apps, you know, mobile app downloads are we getting on Android, iOS, so you have to try, you know, do an acquisition at a different levels, uh, and then you start tracking it on a week and week basis. All right, so uh, I want to do a quick uh, exercise, if you guys want, so any questions so far on, on uh, you know, Dave McClure thing, because really this is a really, really powerful framework that you can apply on anything, you know, even if you can apply on the whole big enterprise uh, sort of development if you're doing, uh, if at all it is more, you know, business outcome driven, uh, you can apply that framework right there. Any questions here? No? I wanted to figure out, uh, so if you've seen Confingen, right? Just want to take an example, you know, we, 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 Naresh has built this whole product, Confingent. Uh, if you really have to track one metric to figure out, is he acquiring enough, you know, sort of, uh, in terms of acquisition, what could be that metric? Make a guess, I mean, let's test it out. No one knows that, you know, we have to just figure out. So. So it could also be both, right? I mean, we could always choose to make one, uh, and this is this will come up. This will come up based on the question. So now we want to track both, probably. Uh, probably, if you track both, you might figure out the number of conferences is correlated with the number of users people come, right? Yeah, I mean, there there, there could be correlation, and and you can figure out only after tracking it. So so if you've seen uh, all this, we're tracking all of this. It's not that we are sort of making decisions based on that. The decisions, you know, get based on a bunch of other things that, you know, I'm going to talk about the whole framework. But this is the data. You can always refer back, and the more you're digging into the whole session, you'll figure out some, you know, causal uh, relationship between SEM, and then suddenly that'll give you a eureka, okay, this is what we should be doing. All right, uh, now once, sure. Absolutely, they do. They do. They do. So, so, so that's that's what I'm com going to come to. One metric that matters. So you know, uh, and that's what out of the whole laundry list, you really have to pick out just one, just one that you're really going to focus on. Now, one of the challenge with that is that it's very very hard to come up with that one thing, uh, right? So, uh, and also, and that keeps changing, and it has to change based on the you know startup you know journey. It could even change based on the sprint, as I said. See, for us, uh, you know, also we came up with this challenge, but. What we were able to do is we were able to create four micro teams, each with their own metric that really matters to them, based on the customer personas. So we figured out that you know what we are really dealing with four different customers. It was an enterprise sort of product. We said you know what this is one persona and this is one team. You focus on this particular metric. This is your holy grail. You make decisions based on this. You make roadmap based on this. You make your releases based on that. So so that's how you know it could it could help. Uh, all right, so so there are multiple frameworks that we you know uh, we just talk about. This is where all of them converge. You know, it's like this is Ash Moria's Lean Canvas, which talks about problem, customer segment, unique value proposition. I mean, you can Google for some of this. Uh, then there is a Lean Startup framework which says problem validation, solution validation. So once you have a problem, you figure out a problem, validate if there is a genuine problem or not. Once you have a solution in mind, you figure out is is this solution going to work? Make a MVP learn from it, go through it, right? Now that same thing sort of maps it to a lean analytics which says empathy. Empathy is the first stage which basically does your product market fit and sort of cuts across. It says that you have to find a problem that you can really solve, uh, you know, and once you've figured out uh, a poorly net, you know, met need, uh, you know, that can reach to a sort of market segment, that's where you have crossed the empathy stage. Uh, once you've figured out how to solve the problem that people are really, really using it, uh, you know, and getting benefit from is your stickiness. Now that stickiness is more of retention 
uh, in Dave McLeod. So more of these, you know, this sort of, you know, draw parallel. So you have to really pick one that that is more easy for you to, you know, use, and your uh, the whole team can sort of relate to. We picked up Dave McLeod and really worked for us. I mean, you guys can make your own calls and. Uh, then you have uh, virality, revenue, and scale. You know? Typically, it basically means you find a problem, you know, that is worth solving, figure out a good solution, got a, you know, get a bunch of you know hundred thousand you know hundred customers out there, validate it, build a MVP. You can validate it through multiple you know tools and hacks that are available. Once you have it, uh, you start figuring out that you know what are they really coming back? So your stickiness engine is building, or your retention is improving. You have to reach a stage where you're really really sure. Okay, now I think you know we are able to retain. If you pump in more at the top of the funnel, we will be able to retain some. Now, if you don't have a retention, basically the more you're acquiring, you're just losing all of them. So, you know, it'll always be a leaky bucket. So you try and fix that leaky bucket first before you actually, you know, go more on scale. That's the whole sort of device. Sure. Right. It's sort of a checkpoint, more of a mental checkpoint. Um, and one of the funny thing is that if you ask a startup which stage they are in, they are always think that they are on the next stage. Okay, no, no, no problem. You know, product market we've already done with. You know, we we, we have, but actually uh, they are you know they are sort of struggling. Also, there is a lot of overlap at times, right? So, for example, some are in a pressure to figure out their revenue engine, right, at the early stages, right? So, so they are iterating bunch of this together, and that's where it sort of gets uh, you know uh, you know confusing. Right, 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 right. So that depends. So the, so the whole paradigm depends on two things. One is which stage you are here, and which business are you in. So like they figured out six business models. Sure. Right. So uh, so they are not stages. They have a different approach. That you know you so uh, a lean canvas. If you look. Right. Right, you can. Right, you can. So, and that's where it's somewhere in the revenue part, right? It maps to the revenue. So, so they have a different approach. For example, if you've uh, read Ashmore, you know Ashmore's book. So he says, you, this is your canvas. You, these are your problems. This is your solution. You keep iterating based on the hypothesis and keep changing these. So this basically, you know, if you if you have a you know sort of solution, you're building a solution. You build an MVP, learn from it. And uh, ultimately, you sort of, you know, if it is not working, you again change the solution. So you are iterating right here. So you are, that means you are still in the stickiness business, right? So that same stage. Now, if you have figured out a revenue stream, a lot of startups don't have a revenue stream. They only have a hypothesis that, you know what, if I reach a stage, I'm going to start making money, which means they have not reached yet. Now, if they are reached yet, then obviously, then they are, you know, doing something on the revenue side out. So it's, it's not a very, very hard comparison, but you know, it sort of relates where each of these models converge somewhat, and you can pick one, and that should be fine with you. I mean, uh, and I'm going to you know talk about the whole uh, analytic uh, you know sort of metric cycle that you can go through by picking any of these models. I mean, based on you know the uh, at the end, I mean, it's 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 your own startup journey that you're going through. Uh, the, the basics remain same: that you you want to solve a problem, you want to iterate very very fast, you want to go through the build, measure, learn loop very very fast, and you know sort of keep learning from it and input. It. Yeah. So uh, as I was saying, the whole metric that you track depends upon two things: uh, you know your stage of growth uh, and your business model. Now, in business model, you have e-commerce model, which is your typical flip Flipkart and you know, uh, sorry, not Flipkart. I mean, um, uh, you know, some of the uh, sort of uh, portals that that sell. So Flipkart sorry comes on on a yeah two-sided marketplace also. For example, uh, we were in a two-sided marketplace, so we had to look at the seller side, buyer side. Uh, so our some of the metric could be different. There is a SaaS. Which talks about more of churn and customer lifetime value. Uh, you know, those some of the metrics you can reuse in most of the other places. Uh, and then you have user generated content. And let me just show you. Uh, so I have a graph which talks about uh, you know one metric across all, and uh, we just go through that. Now once you've figured out which model you are, and a lot of times these models will overlap. You might be a mobile SaaS company, I mean, for that matter. So there's a lot of overlap that will happen. Uh, in fact, if you read a book, uh, which I, I have a recommendation. Uh, that has a clear flow chart for each of these models, so you'll be able to relate exactly how do we go about uh, you know in doing that. All right, so we've figured out you know what 
type of metric to look at you know what are the different ways you know uh, by which you should look at the metric what stage you are in what business model you are in now it's a simple flow like bill measure learn is more of on the development side this is more on the hypothesis testing and analytics side you pick a kpi what we call it is uh, you know draw a line in sand so if you figure out i am in a retention stage you figure out all right what should be our retention what's the ideal retention in a business like ours you know it's like 10% it doesn't matter if it is 6 or 7 you draw a line that you know what we want to reach 10% now once you have it you have to figure out what are the potential improvement that we can do or your backlog to reach 10% right once you have it you prioritize if you have a data to back okay this is how we're going to do it it's fine uh, form a hypothesis design a whole test around it and we we, uh, we you know we saw the whole hypothesis testing loop pretty much it applies right here figure out uh, measure the results if it improved your metrics have improved your tracking it on a you know week on week month on month basis uh, if it is not obviously you have to pivot or give up if it is fine obviously you have improved something learn from it probably change the you know sort of uh, uh, you know sort of the benchmark or uh, line in sand right? it sort of gives you a quick flowchart that you can run through uh, the way we did it more of on the sprint side so we fig figure figure out a sprint uh, theme that we want to improve retention now it could happen and one of the struggle that we always had is that we figured out okay we are doing this for retention so we want to improve our uh, churn rate for example right so a lot of customers are giving up so we figured out our hypothesis that people are going out because of these five things so we need to do we put it in the sprint backlog and say if we do all this our churn will start improving this might happen that the churn actually started improving four sprint down the line because by the time it hits the release people start using it you know you have you have to wait for a while to make it but it, it gives you a good structure that at uh, and we used to have a kanban board where we put you know this is the current hypothesis in you know in testing uh, and this is the kpis we are watching for so in every you know sprint meeting people will come back okay tell me you know what did we improve on the last one or not you know so you go back reflect on it and you know if there is more thing on the backlog just to continue that you you know start doing it all right so this is where we are talking about the one metric that matters so basically based on the whole stage you are in and the business you are in you have to really figure out what is one metric that is really really will make or break your whole startup the closer you are to figuring that out the better are you know your own iteration loop right uh, so there's a you know why one obviously i mean you know the, the, you guys also said i mean that one will let you focus really really razor sharp right on that goal uh, it'll you know sort of also help you to make a you know sort of draw a line in the sand that you know what this is a metric and you know we need to reach here now that here could be off but at least you have a stab at it uh, focus the entire team right there because everyone is now talking the same language we are trying to improve churn or we are trying to improve you know metric uh, a lot of ideas will come from the team uh, since they know that this is what you are trying to improve right we want to point if you are improving 50 other things people won't even remember they won't even contribute to it uh, you know uh, to that and it will sort of help you to build a whole experimental culture and you know kalpesh gave you a talk which is like a you know making the whole experimentation culture which is really really great uh, you know in, in startup uh, so this is a quick uh, chart which is also available right there so if you are an e-commerce business and trying to figure out stickiness what you really care is uh, the loyalty and conversion right and you know they could also pick one conversion for example i mean if people are coming to my e-commerce site not buying anything it's like bullshit nothing happens so you really focus on conversion right there now if you already having conversion you reach the stage the second level of stickiness is you know what how many times people are buying it right so i have a big basket grocery business if people are only buying groceries once in a lifetime it doesn't help me i want them to buy so you draw a line and say that i would really want people my customers to buy twice a month at least so you draw a line and say and then you figure out okay what do i need and you know they start instrumenting your thing how many customers are not buying twice a month so what is going wrong there and you start you know figuring out to you know to probe them by push notifications <laughs> absolutely so that's why it's a line in sand you clearly you know and absolutely absolutely and you know it goes back to this loop right so if you know yeah you draw a new line right i mean right there i mean you try again you draw a new line yeah and, and that will happen because a, a lot of time you won't find the benchmark in the industry yeah okay all right 
So this is a quick, uh, you know, I think this chart is available on the, on the on the book and you'll be able to figure out. But based on that business, for example, we, uh, you know, uh, we focus a lot on retention and we defined our own metric. I mean, we wanted to figure out that, you know, on a social network, for example, if I, you know, we were building a bunch of you know, social networks, we wanted to figure out that we want at least people to do three sort of discussions in a month. Without that, it was a really, really hard benchmark. I mean, you know, the moment we did, our whole filter went really down. And we were totally fine with that. We got a buy-in and said, you know what, we're taking a really hard call. But if we are really, really able to improve that and reach that level, we are really something. We are on to something. Otherwise, not. It turned out that after three months, we, were, we could only get to two, which is OK. I mean, then we said, OK, two is the, is the benchmark. I mean, that's the best we could do. If we improve something, it's fine. So, so we drew a line in the sand and then worked towards it. And uh, you know, sort of that's how we could uh, you know, sail through. All right, so quick summary. Uh, you know, it, uh, so build your whole customer life cycle. Identify where you can you know, sort of leverage, uh, you know, uh, in what stage you are. Try and create, you know, you sort of state your uh, goals in a very measurable way. Something which is measurable, understandable, you know, in ratios. Uh, pick one metric for your startup that really matters. That could change over a period of time. Uh, it could change on a monthly basis. It doesn't matter. You could also take a stab at multiple metrics on each sprint. I mean, uh, you know, once you know, one metric on one sprint and you know, over a period of time within the same stage. You know, if you're on a retention stage, see one of the challenges that we face is that if you focus too much on retention in one shot, beyond a point, I think we felt that you know we're we're just we're just spreading too thin. We're doing analysis paralysis. I mean, you know, what what it is, it is. Let's figure out that probably putting more people on the funnel might improve it. Right, so so that we then we had to you know we change gear to you know acquisition for one or two months. So in one sprint we figured out okay we got good you know this is the persona these guys if we acquire will come up. So we started move back on acquisition you know at some time. So and it's a lot of it is experimentation what we figure out what hypothesis that you you know come up with and you know, sort of try to improve. Uh, run your experiment, test, optimize, figure out your own hacks. You know if you're able to find a causal analysis between something. Uh, it's really great, uh, you know, that will just help you in a, in a more uh, better hack. Pick a new metric and sort of you know, keep running. Uh, this is a really good book, uh, uh, you know, most of the concepts are from here, uh, you know, and, uh, and it talks about in a very, very simple language. There are a bunch of blogs, uh, I'm going to just add one or two references and, uh, you know, share that uh, right out. All right, thank you. Any questions? Uh, how many of you are doing some sort of analytics or some metrics right there in, in, in your company? Did this framework help? You know, yeah, all? Right, right. It, it's very, very simple. And that Dave McClure framework is really, really powerful. I mean, I mean, trust me, I mean, the more I've explained it to people, even executives, they'll just get that. You know, oh, okay, this is a five bucket, and you really tell them that, you know what, we're trying to prove this here. So, so, the, so there are a bunch of things. It depends upon your business. Now, if you're in an e-commerce business, you will be able to figure out you know, industry benchmarks or you know talk to a bunch of people and say this is what it is, right? I mean, beyond a point, there's no little bit. Yeah, I mean, see, the, the whole thing is there's one five percent rule also. In in really really good startups, they're improving their metrics five percent a week, most of these metrics, right? So especially acquisition and retention, they're like you know Slack. If you go look look back. Slack data, they say, you know what, 5% you have to hit that number. You could always figure out that, you know what, in my kind of thing, you know, it's a discovery problem, so we'll do it at this stage. Uh, but at a growth, you really have to hit upon you know, that. Some of those numbers.
next time right No, and there are a bunch of growth also. I, I did not add uh, tools, but there are a lot of tools uh, and hacks to do. For example, the simplest one, you know, you, you could do, a, you know, if you're in a more customer you know, enterprise, where you do NPS and you're figuring out, okay, NPS is what we really want to improve, right? Net Promoter Score. Basic hack could be an app is, you know, you launch an app, you give them a pop-up. Hey, did you like the experience? If not, the, the no takes him to a quick feedback pop-up, which you start learning you know, why something went wrong. You know, so you're, you're, you're talking to your early, early, very, very early customers. So depending upon your stage of growth, as, as you said, you have to figure out your own hack and the metrics that would really improve. You know, and, and that's how you will be able to validate the whole thing. I mean, if you're in an app business, you really have to work, will I, you know, so what do I want to achieve out of the app? Do I want 100,000 downloads? If that, you know, is that the, you know, sort of assumption on which you will make revenue, then obviously you have to do something about uh, acquisition. If not, then it is obviously one more feature where you can track it, what people are using it for. And uh, that could give you a picture of where to improve or optimize. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much.